So he had done all this bullshit out there, and there's really no such thing as profanity. Because if you beg a pie, I don't know, you, you drop it, you might say, fiddly dee. If he begged a pie, he might say shit. That means I'm sorry I dropped a pie. So it was fiddly dee. I'm sorry. <laughs> there's no bad words. You're brought up in an environment of what to use that kind of language. When I spoke at Columbia University, they said, do you have to use that kind of language? Would you use that kind of language if your mother was here? So I said, mother, will you stand up? And she <laughs> There's no bad language. But what is terrible is prejudice and discrimination. So years ago, this pilot that I was telling you about, that flew over German munition plants, he was a member of an organization, thank you, called Technocracy. How many of you have heard of technocracy? Okay, the technocrats believe in using science and technology rather than politics as a means of governing people. So I attended about two or three of their meetings and I enlisted, I, I joined, I found it pretty good. Then I noticed there were no blacks in the organization. So I walked over to Howard Scott, who was the chief engineer, and I said, how come there's no blacks? You let them start their own section. And I said, well, how come there's no Orientals? He said, the Oriental mind can't grasp technology. That was in the old days. So I knew, I tried to tell him that you're looking at the first generation Orientals, but by the third or fourth generation, they'd be just like us. And we know a regional dialect. And he said, no, no, the Oriental mind will never grasp technology. He died a long time ago, and so did his ideas with him. There's nothing the matter with technocracy at those except that was areas which I couldn't agree with, so I resigned because I could not defend it. So then I said to myself, what is needed? How can you design a society where there's no conflict? Well, there's always been conflict, there's always been corruption in government, there's always been wars, and the Bible says there will always be wars and rumors of wars, and we shall always have the poor amongst us. This is in your Bible. I can't accept that crap. I believe that man makes God in his own image. Some jerk that you pray to. And this guy sits on the throne and he looks down and he can see everything you're doing. Whether you're in this concrete building or anything else. They tell us that God made everything. Every galaxy, every universe, every bug, every plant. And then Jesus proceeds to insult it. Just before they crucified him, he looked up and said, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. But this guy created everything. You don't have to tell them. They don't know what they're doing. That's what I mean by an insult. When a farmer says, dear God, we have a drought, my corn is drying up, how about some rain? My God, gee, thanks for telling me, I didn't think of that. You know, we reduce God to some jackass that gets angry, creates floods, sins, injury, pain, and if you don't follow the holy scriptures, you burn eternally. That doesn't sound like God. That sounds like a psychopath. <laughs> when I tell you God is made in the image of man, you go to different countries, the Indians concept, happy hunting ground. No Indian pictures stainless steel automobiles. No Eskimo can dream of walking on a palm fringe beach unless they've seen movies. So it means that you can't think of anything unless it's within the culture that you're brought up in. That's why each little group thinks they're okay. The Nazis used to call themselves the master race. The Jews called it God's chosen people. Well, if you start doing that sort of thing, you're separating people. And when you have women's studies, Polish studies, Jewish studies, black studies, you're separating people. All people need clean air, clean water, arable land, and a relevant education. That means how we depend on the forest if we dump stuff into the ocean. I've got to tell you this. About 45 years ago, the U.S. Army, the United States Army, dumped 65 tons of nerve gas in Miami. How many of you knew that? Nearly one hand, two hands, off the coast of, of Miami near the Gulf Stream. How can you love your country and do things like that? 
Don't you see that? Einstein th thought that if he gave them the formula, an Oppenheimer, for the atom bomb, surely man would be wise enough to demonstrate it out at sea and say to Japan, we don't want to drop it over your country, this is what we can do if you don't drop your arms now. But no, they dropped it on Hiroshima and Nagasaki because they're brought up with the old crap in the Bible that says revenge is sweet. You do things like that, you build hatred for centuries. So I'm trying to tell you things. Sure, I can give a beautiful lecture on God bless America. Who the hell are you to tell God who to bless? If he made everybody and you say God bless America, who are you to do that? Everybody knows what God wants, except God. Because man makes God in his own image. A guy that gets angry creates floods, that's not God. And then I went to another church. I was looking for the truth in the early days when I didn't know any better. I was looking for the truth. So I went to sat satanic churches because I wanted to see what they say. They believe that Satan rules the world. There's more evidence to demonstrate that than God. Serial killers, bombs, continuous war, dumping stuff in the ocean, poison in the atmosphere. They seem to have a chip that sounds right because I don't buy that crap either. I'm just telling you what different people believe, and they're just as sincere as you are. The Japanese are brought up with the same values about you as you devise about them. And we talk about Nazis as being cruel. If you get a book by H.G. Uh, Wells called Outline of History, in that book he says the U.S. was moving about a thousand Germans toward the camp grounds, but the German army was catching up with them, so they put them in a big hole machine on them all. Well, we don't have any real movies on anti-war. Maybe All Quiet on the Western Front or The Vickers. Do you know how many mo movies were made pro-war? Thousands of them. And I remember the, the original All Quiet on the Western Front. A British man grabs a barbed bar wire He's about to climb over, and a bomb goes off, and it shows two hands on the barbed wire. Well, they never show the horrors of war, because enlistment wouldn't go up. And the boys in the army, a lot of them, think they're defending this country. The only way to defend this country is to build a bridge between nations. So I said to myself years ago, different nations think differently. They have different values. Some of them have 20 wives and that's normal to that country. So how the hell are you going to bridge the difference between nations? So what I did when I was 21 years old, I attended meetings of the Ku Klux Klan, and I dissolved it in a month and a half. That is in Miami. Then I attended meetings of the White Citizen Council. They hate foreigners. And I dissolved it in one month. Then I asked some people in Brooklyn who are the most backward people in the area? And they said, well, we believe the Arabs are on Atlantic Avenue. I said, what makes you think they're backward? They still believe the Earth is flat. So I said, boy, I've got to get to those guys. <laughs> if I can't get to those guys, how am I going to change the world? So I, I looked up the guy that was in charge. His name was Elbaz. I called him, and I said, can I come and talk to you, Elbaz? He said in this type dialect, he said, from where did your father be born? I said, Lebanon. He very good, very good. You are Arab? I said, yeah. That means, uh, yes, in Arabic. I'm not an Arab. He said, come and saw me. That means come and see me. So I came to see him. 